Next, we have JP sir. Dr. J. Uh, J. Prasad Baskaran will be talking on the art of managing post-operative complications. He is the founder chairman of Amardeep IK Host Centers, Trivandrum and uh, Kollam. He is also a visiting faculty at Cochin Eye Care Center, Alua. He pioneered emulsification in Kerala, being the first keyhole cataract surgeon in Trivandrum. He did his MBBS from Trivandrum Medical College, MS from RIO Trivandrum, fellowship from Shankara Eye Care uh, Coimbatore. He was awarded FICO and in cataract and FICO in uh, 2015 and for glaucoma in 2020. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon. I'm very glad that all of you have, uh, are here, not sp uh, speaking to empty chairs. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, excellent talks from Ambika and all the other speakers here. And uh, let me start on managing post-operative complications. I'll just go through an overview there, rather than going in detail about managing single cases. If you have an endophthalmitis, let me t this is from Google, the picture. Um, always remember, you are alone and you have an endophthalmitis. Talk to the patient, the seriousness of the issue. Take a vitreous sample, give Vanco Kefta, then refer to a VR surgeon. That will be in the best interest of the patient as well as uh, avoiding a medical legal issue. And then you come back and investigate as to is there a source in your uh, theater from where this has happened. And always keep your cool. Because at that point, if you start getting agitated, nothing is going to happen. Be cool and um, be prepared to face. I had my last end of thalmitis in 2014, 2013. 13 cases I operated. I had one single case of end of thalmitis, came on the fourth day. Uh, the only uh, point I can show, I mean, say um, against the patient is that they were keeping uh, uh, cotton, simple cotton, over the uh, operated dye, and the entire thing was soaked with multiple drops and all the sweat and other things. We do not know, but we uh, investigated, nothing was found. So always remember to give an injection, take a uh, vitreous sample, send for microbiology, then send refer to the, pay, uh, to the VR surgeon. And to prevent, always remember, povidone iodine is excellent, proven povidone iodine. And when you drape, you always drape, you have your um, pointer, uh, sir, sir, hello, pointer, yeah. And uh, drape it well. And uh, from 2014, I have been using endorsed moxifloxacin. I have no financial interest, but that is, I never used, um, which one, the, this one, the red, red dot. Oh, no, that's not working yet. Yeah, so I always give moxifloxacin in all my cases. 0.3 ml of moxifloxacin and 0.7 ml of BSS I add. Make it 1 cc and then I use it to replace the, uh, the entire BSS inside the bag. I also use the same to hydrate all the side port as well as the main port at the end of surgery. The same one, I never had any endothelial problem. I never had any tasks. All these uh, I have been doing for nine years now. It is not just a small uh, aliquot of uh, moxifloxacin undiluted into the bag, no. And then, of course, TAS, of course, you know, that happens uh, in the first um, 24 hours. And please remember, hit it with steroids, topical, as well as systemic. And don't give up till three months uh, because it will clear up. Most of the cases will clear up. This is once again from Google, it's not, but we do come across many such cases. I had one patient, I remember, my, an ophthalmologist's mother, other eye I operated with mature cataract, it was absolutely fine, she was very happy. She said, okay, let us operate the second eye, immature cataract, 6 8 in vision. First post-operative day, it was counting fingers one meter, and severe task actually. The ophthalmologist cried, I also cried along with her, but at the end of six months, that cornea cleared. She lived with a clear vision for about 17 years, and then she passed away. So whenever you see tasks, don't worry. But then you should go back and find out whether your OT staff are cleaning your cannulas and tubes well. There shouldn't be any residual chemicals. 
and do not change the brand of your BSS OVD or the Blu-Rex which you are using. If you are comfortable with one brand, continue using it. The other fellow will come and say that I'll give you 30% discount or I'll give you 100 free. Please don't fall for that. Use whichever you think is comfortable. You can change provided your friend, multiple people have used hundreds or thousands and say that they, they are quite safe. Otherwise, do not change. And always wash away the talc on your um, gloves if you are using a powdered glove. The other one is thrice costly. Now, DM strip is something that can happen. Here, this is one DM strip. Once again, let me tell you, it is an ophthalmologist's father, actually. A pretty aged man, 90 years, very hard cataract. I did FACO, uh, went very well. But then at the end of uh, one week, uh, the patient came back with edema in one area. This was uh, handled by my uh, cornea surgeon, Dr. Anil Radhakrishnan. Um, a mixture, a 14% mixture of C3F8 with air injected from a non-affected area. Then this process called vending is done where you poke the stroma and let out the fluid so that uh, the uh, decimates will adhere better. So always how to prevent, please remember, the, uh, the wound sizes should be adequate. You should have carefully, you should insert and remove all instruments. When you are using your fake tip to enter into the anterior chamber for the first time, please press down on the posterior lip and then go in gently. And if you see a small strip at the limbus, don't say, oh, nothing will happen, it will heal well, no problem. Always put in a large air bubble and ask the patient to lie flat for 24 hours at home, nothing will happen, it will stick. Steroid in this glaucoma is another one that has happened. Many a times the patient goes on buying it from the pharmacy for uh, months and months and years. And please remember that if it is more than 180 days of steroid drop, steroid induced glaucoma, then it becomes a chronic uh, open angle glaucoma. I'm sure uh, Smith and Kiran will agree with, with me on that. Please remember that. Please check the IOP when the patient comes. You can do only an NCT and if in doubt, do a uh, get. So at seven, uh, day seven, at six weeks and three months, please check. And whenever you write a prescription of steroids, whether it is topical or systemic, write stop in big capital letters, stop. Nirthanam in Malayalam, you should always write. And uh, that will help you medical legally and also save the patient's eye. These days I think about myself first before I think about the patients. And this I used, I did use this anterior subtenance orocot. 10 milligram per ml, it's a diluted one. What you get commercially is 40 milligram per ml. I used it at the end of surgery to reduce the number of drops. I give this orocot and then I give intracameral moxie and then I give topical antibiotics only for 10 days and no medications. There was only one breakthrough inflammation, but I had five cases of post-operative steroid induced glaucoma, where one case I excised that uh, uh, orocot the others, I put them on anti medications, they resolve, but then I stopped using it because I thought if the patient goes away, a patient doesn't come back for a follow-up, patient has a stroke and is not coming to you at all, then there is always a higher risk, and this has not been sort of, uh, it's, it is not very attractive for me at this point of time. And then, of course, I wrong eye oil power, uh, you put OVD on both sides, always support with your left hand instrument. Always support with the left hand instrument. Cut gently, ensure that there is adequate OVD above and below. You can implant the lens and then cut also. That is another option. Um, and when you take it out, please remember to keep that left hand instrument pushing down on whatever is coming behind. So you put OVD there. You go in with your forceps, a lens holding forceps. Always, whatever people say, I extend the wound a bit to minimize trauma to the wound. And then you go with a lens holding forceps, hold, go with my dialer from the left side, keep pushing on the, that half of the IOL so that it comes out vertically. It doesn't touch the endothelium at all. The second half, hold it down, then bring it out. And then you can implant the lens into the back. This was a high myop plus, I, mean, I think it was 32 axial length. Please do multiple scans, multiple keratometries, multi multiple machines if you have, all immersion always, and optical if you have available. It's extremely good. Uh, I think uh, uh, um, uh, Dr. Paul will always say that in silicon field lies and extremes of axial length, optical biometry is excellent. I also agree with that. And always remember to check both eyes.
when you have delayed decentration of a lens, this is one patient who was, who was referred to me. So we get an optic capture, you suture it to the iris. The haptics are sutured with 90 proline to the iris. And then you do a Sapser knot, put in a Sapser knot, which is, I think, a well sanded procedure. And once you tie it to the iris, it stays. You can do uh, the same on the opposite side. So once the tie, uh, haptics are tied to the iris, you push it back, gently nudge it down, and that is the end of the story. You, you have, this is one patient, unfortunately, another of, uh, another of Salmology's um, mother, actually. Very hard cataract, one I had already operated. Delayed post-operative end of Salmitis. Uh, the bag was clean, vitreous was clean. Steroids, steroids, tapering, once again inflammation. So I did a gonioscopy on this patient. This is a uh, surgical gonioscope actually, which is used for uh, multiple uh, operative, intraoperative procedures. So if you look into that angle, inferior angle, you will see that there's a small bit of um, nucleus lying there, somewhere here. I think you can see, yeah. So you can see now that there's a small bit of nucleus lying there, inducing this recurrent inflammation. So I went in using a San Jacob lens that I use for my goniotomies, and then I take it out, remote. The patient, I became very quiet. Yes, he had severe cystoid macular edema, which resolved. I think I'll stop it at this point. Time is over. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Thank you, uh, JP, sir. Thank you for all that information. Sir, uh, not only told us about uh, uh, the managing the post-operative, he's also uh, told us how to prevent it from occurring to be.